Hi everyone, today we'll take a look at signs of quadratic functions. So this video will be a fairly short video. In this case, we're going to be looking at four different cases um, of how quadratic functions plot out on the, on the graph and how we can tell their general shape and direction based by looking at the value uh, at the coefficient of a and the determinant. Okay, so let's look at the first case we have here. So in the first case, we have when a is greater than zero and d is less than zero. Now, note that uh, all the cases that we're going to be talking about will be in reference to um, the, the case of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, so we're always going to be talking about in this form only. So now what happens is a gives us the direction of whether it's going to open upwards or downwards. Okay, so whenever a is greater than zero, it's going to be an upward facing parabola. All right. And the determinant tells us how many roots there are going to be. Now, if there's going to be, if, if determinant is greater than zero, we're going to have two roots. That means our parabola is going to go through the X and Y axis like this. So there are going to be two points where our parabola will intersect the X axis, right? There are going to be two X intercepts. Now, if the determinant is equal to zero, then it's going to just touch the parabola at one point just one point exactly one point right and if it's less than zero in this case it won't be touching the um it won't be touching the x-axis at all right because there are going to be no real values or there are going to be no real roots right so because there are no real roots it's not even going to intersect anywhere you can see in this case that the parabola does not intersect the x-axis in any any location right it's going to be increasing and increasing from here on on here on out right it won't be touching the parabola at all Right. So this case basically tells us that if you have a is great when a is greater than zero and when D is less than zero, we're always going to have an upward facing parabola. All right. And it's not going to be touching the roots. So it's always going to be in the positive y axis um, area. All right. Now let's look at a small uh, example question. All right. So the question says for all x, x squared plus 2ax plus 10 minus 3a is greater than zero, then the interval in which a lies is one. All right, so this is based exactly on what case one was. All right, so the, we have a polynomial right here, right? We have a polynomial, and this polynomial is said to be always be greater than zero, right? So it's exactly like this blue parabola right here, right? It's exactly like this blue parabola, and it's always going to be greater than zero. So we know we know two things right off the bat. We know a is greater than zero. Well, a here is also greater than zero. Look at this, it's x squared. That means the coefficient is one. So we already have that, right? Now the second property which we need to look at is the determinant, right? The determinant, d should be less than zero, right? That is when we can say that, yes, there are, are gonna be no real roots and it will, the parabola will never touch the y-intercept. So let's get started. All right, so now we're, we're, we know that our determinant should be less than zero. So. Let's let's solve for the determinant and we'll get our um, equation in terms of a from there. We can find an interval of a. All right. So we this is our b and this is our c, right? So I can, you know, list it out for you. a is equal to 1, b is 2a, and c is 10 minus 3a. All right. So we have this as well. So now we need to do this. d determinant should be less than 0 or b squared minus 4ac should be less than zero all right now let me put uh 2a for b 2a whole squared minus 4 a is 1 and our c is 10 minus 3a 10 minus 3a is equal to zero okay so i'm going to have 4a squared minus 4 times 10 minus 3a is sorry, it's going to be less than zero, right? It's going to be less than zero. Less than zero, less than zero, right? So I see a four and a four here. So I'm going to divide by four on both sides. So I'm going to be left with, what I'm going to be left with is a squared minus 10, my, sorry, plus 3a is less than zero. Okay, so that's gonna that's what that's exactly what, what I'm gonna have, right? 
a squared plus 3a minus 10 is less than zero. Let me rewrite this once again. So I'm going to have plus 3a, right? Now I see a direct factor of 5 and 2, so I'm going to make that, right? So a plus 5 and a minus 2 is less than 0, right? So now, now I'm going to have to make a small um, check here, right? I'm going to have to check things. Uh, I'm going to have to check a few things. So I know my, my critical points here are a is equal to minus 5 and a is equal to 2. Now I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to, I'm going to change the color first and I'll create a number line. So I'm going to create a number line here. Now, uh, do it like this. And this. So I'm going to have maybe 0 like right here. 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and minus 5. All right. So now I'm going to have to see. Now I know my one, one point is right here, right? One point is right here, and the other point is right here, okay? So now I'm going to have to check different places for which satisfy this condition, right? So now for here, you know, both can be negative and positive, right? One has to be positive, one has to be negative. So let me see if zero, so now if zero works, that means I know this entire range in the middle will work. Okay, so if zero satisfies this condition, if I put a is equal to zero, right? So I'm going to have five and minus two. That is negative, right? Five times negative two is negative 10. So zero works. That means I'm going to have this entire range right here like this. So this range, actually, I should put an open circle right here. It should be an open circle, not a closed circle. So because it's not um, less than or equal to, so I should have like an open circle and open circle like this. So now if I take any value, right? If I take minus one, so if I take minus one, I'm gonna, what I'm going to have is minus 1 plus 5, which is 4, minus 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. So positive times a negative is going to give me a negative answer, right? Times a negative, sorry. Okay, so now suppose I took minus 6. So minus 6 would give me a negative number here, and it would also give me a negative number. So negative times negative is a positive. If I took more than 2, right? If I took 3, so 3 plus 5 is 8, and 3 minus 2 is also positive, right? So they're both positive, hence um, this entire thing will be greater than zero, which we don't want. So our final answer, which we can say is that, okay, let me change the color back to green, is that A should be less than two and greater than minus five. So again, the whole concept of this question was based on the fact that being understanding the property of the of this case, right? Which we said was, all right, so we know that's supposed to be positive. That means there are gonna be no real roots. If there, are no, if there are going to be no real roots, the graph will never have an x-intercept. If it never has an x-intercept, you know, the determinant will be less than zero, right? That is That was our main main point here, right? And then we just do norm, normal algebra. We set up an inequality and we solve it, all right? Again, uh, if, if some of you are confused, I can explain this. So again, the whole, the whole um, process or the whole understanding of this is, I need to I need to find I need to find a value or I need to find a range of values which satisfy this condition, right? Either either this is positive, this is negative, or this is negative, this is positive. They cannot be the same signs. I can't have this positive and this positive and this or this negative and this negative, right? I'm only I can only get a negative value of I can only get a negative value on the, on the left hand side if they're the opposite signs, and I can only get that when. Um, Basically, when I have values of a between minus 5 and 2. All right. So now let's look at case 2. Case 2 is the exact opposite of case 1. Instead of um, we having a, an upwards parabola, we have a downwards facing parabola now. And that is done because we have, we have made a as negative, right? So whenever our, um, our a is less than 0 and our determinant is less than 0, all of our values will always be negative, right? All the values of f of x or our output, right? Or y or f of x, whatever you're gonna call it, it's always gonna be less than zero. Again, a gives the general direction of the parabola, right? Right. We had, if a is positive, we have an upward facing parabola. a is negative, we have a downward facing parabola. If a is zero, it's not a parabola because then this entire thing would be zero and we'd have a linear equation of ax plus b form in an ax plus b form, right? Now, determinant 
uh, less than zero means that there are no real roots. Hence, the parabola will never intersect will never intersect um, the x-axis, right? Again, you can under, you can expect a question very similar to this. Maybe I could have said, you know, uh, for all x uh, for all this instead of this, I could have said less than zero, right? And I could have said I could have, I could have made a um, negative negative one instead of one, right? I could have changed that up and given you the same question. You know, it'll be a little bit more different, right? That's it. Okay, now let's look at case three. Case three is slightly different. Now we have a is greater than zero, but we have not uh, given you any condition about the determinant. Okay, so here, what is happening is you have to pay a lot of close attention, right? We're having two roots here, right? We're having two real roots. So we can say determinant is greater than zero. Definitely we can say that, right? I haven't mentioned it here, but I can mention it um, right here. Because in this case, determinant is greater than, I'm going to say determinant is greater than or equal to zero. That way we know that there is at least one root, right? We don't know about two roots, two distinct roots, but we know we'll have at least one root. All right. So now here, what is happening is, so at a certain range, this parabola is positive, right? Right here. And a certain range, it's negative, right? This is usually done by looking at the roots, right? Let's say alpha and beta are the two roots of this parabola, right? So whenever we have uh, a is greater than zero, so what ha what happens is when, when the values or the uh, output or the f of x for the value of x between the roots will always be negative, right? That is common sense. You can you know think about it intuitively, right? If I have a parabola and something like this, right? This val these values will always be negative because they're between the roots and outside the roots, right, in both places, we're going to have positive values of f of x. Now, very similarly, we're going to have the same thing here, but this time a is going to be less than zero. So we have a downwards facing parabola, right? Same concept applies here, except now, instead of, um, now, instead of uh, roots being negative, we have positive roots, uh, positive values, positive values of f of x between our roots, right? And outside, and beyond, our, beyond alpha and beta, we have negative roots. Right? Again, it's a very intuitive thing. You can always, you know, you can always understand it if you're ever sitting in an exam and you, you know, you kind of have a brain fade moment. What's happening? You can always draw simple graphs, draw simple, you know, parabola, make a line through, and you know, you'll understand. Okay, so this is the condition that's being asked. This is what I need to find, and this is the nature of the graph. You can always do it on the spot. You don't really need to memorize it. You'll understand it. You'll, you'll get a better intuitive feeling as you do more and more questions. All right, so now let's look at a few uh, example questions. All right, so the question goes like this. If the quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero has imaginary roots and 4a minus 2b plus c is less than zero, then show that a minus 2b plus 4c is less than zero. All right, so the first thing we can get from this is it's imaginary roots. That means imaginary roots essentially tell us that we have determinant less than zero or b squared minus 4ac is less than zero right we also know that right that is one thing we can say immediately right now let's take a look let's take a look at this right we have 4a minus 2b plus c is less than zero all right so one more thing before i go forward is that when we know that it has imaginary roots we know that for whatever value of x we have, there are going to be no roots. So we're going to have either we have an upwards facing parabola or a downwards facing parabola. We don't know. All right. So let me take another color. I'll just draw a small graph right here. So this is this is how you should approach the question. Right. So break break down every single information that you know. Right. So I have my um, x, y, x, y plane right here, x and f of x. Right. So y is equal to f of x. Right. I'll take another color to green. So either we're gonna have some curve like this or some curve like this. I don't know, right? It can be anywhere here as long as the parabola is not touching the x-axis, right? Now we know that as well. So we know that for every value of x, f of x is either completely positive or completely negative. We don't know what it is, but we know it's one of them, right? Now this is this is the this, this is the out of the box part, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to set this equation as this equation. So I'm going to try, what I'm saying is I'm going to write ax squared plus bx plus c as 
4a minus 2b plus c. Now, how can I do that, right? That means a remains as it is, b remains as it is, and c remains as it is. Now, the only way I can see is by replace, putting some value of x, right? Now, if I look closely, if I take x as negative 2, I can do that. So if I take x as negative 2, what I'm going to have is a minus 2 whole squared plus minus 2 x, sorry, minus 2 b, or I can put b up here, plus c. If I do that, I have 4a minus 2b plus c, right? Right here. And I know it's less than 0. So what I can say is x uh, for x less than 0, sorry, for x equal to minus 2, f of x is less than 0, right? Therefore, we can say, right? Therefore, we can say that for all x, right, f of x will be less than 0. And this is because we know that f of x, um, this quadratic uh, equation or this quadratic function has imaginary roots. So we know that this is not the function that we're talking about. We're talking about some arbitrary function of a downwards facing parabola with determinant less than 0, right? So now we also know that a is less than 0. All right, now we have to show this, right? How, how do we show this? We're going to show this this exact way that we showed this, right? So I'm going to try converting. Again, I'm going to try converting uh, ax squared plus bx plus c to a minus 2b plus 4c, okay? I'm going to show that this is also less than 0. Why? Because for any value of x, this, this is going to be less than 0. Okay, so... The only way in which I can see it, you know, kind of in any way I, I can do this is maybe if I take x as half, right? Again, this is something that's going to come by observation, right? There is no uh, conceptual understanding that can help you. This question uh, is kind of, you know, the more questions you do, the more questions you see, uh, the better idea you'll have of how to tackle these type of questions. Again, it's kind of out of the box, right? It's not something everyone's going to get immediately, but I just wanted um, to share this question so that you understand how we actually use the properties that we have learned so far. All right, so for x equal to half, right? For, sorry, x equal to minus half, because remember, we have a negative sign here as well. Right? The only way we can get a negative sign is if we have a negative value, x, right? So now, if I take a negative half, what I'm going to have is a times negative half whole squared plus b, times negative half plus c is less than zero. Because I know for any value of x, f of x will be less than zero. I'm going to have a squared by 4 minus b by 2 plus c is less than zero. Now, if I multiply by 4 on both sides, right? If I multiply by 4 on both sides, right? It's not going to change anything, right? Because this part is zero, and this is just going to, you know, uh, basically, you know, enhance the graph, right? It's it's not going to do anything else, right? The nature of the graph will remain as it is. The the val the sign of the graph will remain as it is. Had I put a minus four, that would have inverted the parabola completely. But I'm not even doing that, right? So whatever is negative is going to stay negative. Whatever is positive, which is nothing, is also going to stay positive, right? So if I multiply both sides by on by four, what I'm going to get is a squared minus two b plus four c is less than zero. And hence, we have proved the condition. Let's look at the last question. So find all the values of a for which the function f of x is satisfying for real values of x. All right. So we have this function in terms of a as well, right? So we have to find the different values of x so that f of x is always less than 0, right? We want it to be less than 0. So again, let's draw a plot. Let's, let's plot a graph, actually, right? Let's draw, let's draw the curve to get a better understanding of exactly what the question is asking us, right? We have a random curve, f of x, right? Which we want to make, right? And, we, and it says it's supposed to be less than zero. So it can be like this, or it can be like this, or it can be like this, right? Doesn't really matter as long as it's a, as long as it's a parabola, right? So now the key here is to understand the different conditions that we have, right? So we, we want it to be less than zero. Therefore, it should not have any roots, right? No real roots should exist. Number one. And number two, 
uh, it, it, should, it, should, it should be downwards facing parabola so that f of x can be negative for all values, for all real values of x. So now, based on the cases that we studied above, we can say that a should be less than zero and, right, so the coefficient of x squared should be less than zero and our determinant should be less than zero. All right, so let's start with the determinant first because that's slightly a longer one. And then we can make our way to a, right? a is fairly small, so we'll do that later. So now we know b squared minus 4ac should be less than zero, right? We know that. So now let's look at b. b is minus 2a, right? So b is minus 2a whole squared minus 4, right? So 4, a is a minus 4, so a minus 4. And then we have c. c is 2a minus 6, 2a minus 6, which is less than 0, right? So I'm going to have 4a squared minus 4. I'm not, I'm not going gonna, gonna to open this up just yet, okay? So I'm going to write a minus 4 times 2a minus 6 is less than 0. I'm going to divide both sides by 4, right? So I'm going to have a squared minus a minus 4 and 2a minus 6 is less than 0, okay? So a squared minus, I'm going to keep a bracket here. So I'm going to have 2a squared, right, minus 6a minus 8a. So I'm going to have minus 14a plus 24 is less than 0, right? Then I'm going to have a squared minus 2a squared plus 14a minus 24 is less than 0. Now, then I'm going to have minus a squared plus 14a plus 24, sorry, minus 24 is less than 0. Now, I'm going to uh, get a squared in positive, so I'm going to multiply and divide. Uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. That's also going to change this sign right here. So I'm going to have a squared minus 14a plus 24 is greater than 0. Okay, so... Now I'm going to draw two factors. I can see 12 and 2 work really well here. So I'm going to write a minus 2 and a minus 12 is greater than 0. So now I'm going to draw a number line right here. Okay. I'm going to change the color and I'll use uh, beige. Okay. So draw a straight number line uh, like this. Okay. So I have a number line right here and I have... Uh, I'll put two somewhere here, and I'll put, or you know what? No, I'm going to put two right here and 12 right here. Now, if I take any number in between, right, and if, and if a number maybe like five satisfies this inequality, then all the numbers in the middle are going to satisfy the inequality, right? If it doesn't, that means it's going to be, it's, uh, the errors are going to be pointing outwards. That, that means a will be less than two and a will be greater than 12. All right. So if I take five, for example, right? So five will give me a negative positive number here and a negative number here. But I need it to be, I need this to be um, either it should be positive, positive or negative, negative. So that's only going to happen if it's going to, if um, basically my thing is going to go outwards like this and like this, right? So that means A must be less than two or A must be greater than 12, right? For this condition to occur. So uh, greater than 12, and I'll just redraw this right here. So, okay, like this. Now, let's look at the other condition that we have. We already satisfied this condition. Now let's find, uh, let's do it for a. So we know it's a downward facing parabola, therefore this coefficient right here must be less than zero. So now if we do that, right, now I'll change the color again. Go back to the original um, turquoise. So. I know a minus 4 should be less than 0 for it to be a downwards facing parabola, right? So let me rewrite this like this, right? So that means a must also be less than 4. That's another condition we have. So now if I plot this inequality as well, so maybe 4 will be somewhere right here, right? That means a must be less than 4. So we also have this, right? Like this. Just like that. Now, how do we satisfy this entire inequality, right? So obviously, now the only way which uh, after the only way what we can the only thing we can do 
is we can say that this this um, function will exist when only when uh, a is less than two, or another way of writing it is when the range of um, it, when the range is basically two minus infinity to two, right? Again, we're not including this because we we have we have we don't have a less than or equal to sign. We just have a less than sign, right? So now you can see this inequality is only satisfied when a is less than twelve. Obviously, we can't have a greater than four, right? So that takes out that that takes this part out of the equation, right? That we're only left with this part. So and obviously we can't have a uh, if we take a greater than two and less than four somewhere around here like three or two point five, then our determinant will not be less than zero. Right? We also need our determinant to be less than zero. So both conditions, determinant and a, the value of a, the coefficient of x squared, they should both be satisfied, and only then, and only then the right value of um, our constant is um, selected. So in this case, a should be less than two. All right. So this this with this question, we wrap up today's video, and in the upcoming videos, we're going to take a look um, at more functions slightly a different uh, variation of quadratic functions okay and after that we'll start with and then we'll look at different functions altogether like rational functions um, we'll take a look at um, uh, we'll take a look at polynomial multiple polynomial functions um, absolute value functions and so on and so forth all right so this was all for today's video and I'll see you in the next one bye bye